Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. This is the last part in this series. In this video, we are going over how to rig this character in Blender. First step, we need to convert the curves into mesh. To do that, go to Object, Convert, Mesh. Tap to Edit Mode and here we go. Step two, we need to apply the modifiers except the Subdivision Service modifier. Just make sure to go over the body, clothes, eyes, eyelashes, etc, etc. For now, leave the hair as it is. Don't worry, I will explain that later. Step 3, we need to reset the location rotation scale into default. And this is a very important point. Hit N, go to the item menu, select the object and hit Ctrl A, all transforms. As I said before, you can leave the hair as it is. When you are done, now we need to install an add-on called Regify. Hey, why an add-on? We can do that manually. Yes, you are right. Look, as an 3D artist, your enemy is tied. This is a process maybe takes one hour to finish. That's why we need to speed up the workflow. Go to Edit, Preference Add-ons, and search for Regify. Click here and save the preference. One number to front view, go with Shift A, Armature, Human Meter Rig. Hit S to scale it down just like so. To see the bones, click here and activate in front. You can also show the names for the bones. In this case, we don't need that. We keep it simple as possible. Now we need to activate the geometry on the X axis. Go to tool and activate X axis mirror or click here. We're gonna test it that, tap to edit mode and here we go. Okay, cool. Select the hand, R for rotate, and as you see, we get this result. The problem is easy. Go to pivot point and change it from individual origins into medium point. And here we go. For now, we need to delete all the face bones. What are you doing? That's not cool. Be cool. Don't rush. In this video, we will be rigging the face as well. So, select that bones, X and delete them. Once again, select the bones for the ears and delete them. The first common issues. Many people forget to delete this face bone. So if you go to the x-ray mode, you can see this bone, select this bone and delete it. If you don't, you're gonna get a problem just like this one. The second common issues. If you forget to apply the scale, you're gonna face a problem just like this one. Now we need to move the bones where R should be. Go to the side view and place the bones just like so. As you see guys, it's very hard to work with these bones because they are huge. I like to change the display into stick. Go ahead and play with these options to get what you like. In the edit mode, select these bones and hit H to hide. In this way, you can focus on a specific area. As you see guys, I don't need to explain anything. We need to place the bones in the mesh. When you are done, select the skeleton and hit Ctrl A, all transforms to reset the location rotation scale into default. Now we are ready to click on generated rig. As you see guys, here where the magic happens. You can ignore all these controls for now. Select the skeleton and hit H to hide. As you see guys, I didn't convert the hair curves into mesh. Go to the outliner and hide the hair folder for now. Select everything, hold shift, select the controls and hit Ctrl B with automatic weights. So guys, we have another problem in the house. We can fix this problem in a few seconds. Select the controls and switch from the object mode into the pose mode. We can give the rig a test to see if it works. As you see guys, it's a powerful tool for a few clicks. We need to fix this problem because this mesh doesn't parent it into the controls. We need to fix the clothes as well, but before we need to fix the first problem. So, Ctrl Z to undo the parent and make sure that you don't have vertex groups in this area. 
select this one, tap to edit mode A to select everything, go to mesh, clean up, decimate geometry. From here change this value into 0 0.8, once again A to select everything, hit 1 to go to the vertex select, mouse right click, mesh vertices, by distance. Once again select everything, hold shift, select the controls at least and control P with automatic weights. Alright, it's still not working, select the mesh, go to vertex group, click here and delete all groups. Now go to modifiers, add modifier, data transfer. We need to push this modifier into the top just like so. The source for our data transfer it's gonna be the body in this case. The data transfer modifier transfers several types of data from one mesh to another. Data types include vertex group, UV maps, vertex colors and custom normals. Now we need to activate vertex data and vertex groups. We will keep the mapping by nearest vertex. That's mean any vertex on these curves will find the closest vertices on the body and copy the information from. So let's jump into the vertex groups. As you see guys we don't have any vertex groups. Go back to the data transfer modifier and click on generated data layers. Blender created automatically the necessary groups for this mesh. Select the controls and go with control tab to switch to the pose mode. Select the torso controller, R to rotate, and here we go. So we can go ahead and apply the data transfer modifier. Guys, we don't need all these controls and handles to rig the body. If you are interested in animation, you need to learn about these handles. It's very important. But for now, we need to pose the character only. So go ahead and turn off torso tweak, fingers detail, and everything with FK and tweak. Believe me guys, for posing a character, these handles are more than enough. Okay, let's say we have this pose and we need to fix some mesh issues. Mm-hmm, what should we do exactly? Ladies and gentlemen, the next step is... Drum roll, white paint. Wait, what? In my opinion, the white paint, it's a very consuming time process. Using the weight paint will allow you to determine how much on effect moving a pawn on the model will have on a set of vertices. Before switching to the weight paint, we need to select the skeleton first. From here and under layers, we can hide or unhide the layers. What I mean about that, the controls. You can click on these little dots to see the effect. Also by holding shift and left mouse click we can unhide all these layers. What we need is to select this layer. This layer called the skeleton layer. And there we go, now we have a skeleton. Select the skeleton first, hold shift, select the skirt. Go with control tab, weight paint. Wait, 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 what's going on here? Guys, I will do my best to keep that easy to understand. We have two base colors. We have the red color and the blue color. The blue color means unweighted and the red color means fully weighted. And that's mean the red color has the full influence on this area and the blue color has no influence at all. The colors between the red and the blue colors are the color gradient. By holding Ctrl mouse left click we start to see the influence for the bone on the mesh. As you see guys this finger bone has an influence on the skirt which we don't need. I think you get it? Exactly. We need to paint this area blue. We can change the weight from here. Zero means the blue color which has no influence at all. The one value means the red color which it has full influence. We need to decrease the weight into zero and start to paint on the surface just like so. From here you can choose many brushes for that. So one more time we have an influence for the thumb on the skirt. We can fix that in another way. Tap to switch to the edit mode. A to select all these vertices. And under vertex groups we have the weight value. 
Zero means the blue color which has no influence at all. One means the red color which has full influence. Make sure to decrease this value into zero and hit an assign. And here we go. Now we need to fix all these problems in the same way that I show you. It's time to parent the hair into the skeleton. Under skeleton, we can switch between pause position and rest position. In this case, we need to choose the rest position. From the outliner, unhide the hair folder, open this folder, hold shift and select all these paths. Make sure that you are in the pose mode, hold shift and select the head bone. Hit Ctrl P and choose bone. From here, switch to the pose position again, and there we go. Also, you can give the hair a quick test, and that's it. As I said before, in this video, we're going over the facial rig as well. Believe me, it's easier than you think. Go to the outliner and hide the hair. Select the eyebrows, go to the modifiers, and apply the subsurf modifier. And do the same thing for the eyelashes. By holding shift, select the eyebrows, the eyelashes, then the body, and hit Ctrl J to join. Tap to edit mode, and make sure to activate the cache for the armature. Go to object data properties. You should have shape keys under vertex groups. In the object mode, click on this little plus button to add a basis layer for the face. Double click to rename it and hit the plus button again. Rename this key blink and go to the edit mode. Hit O on the keyboard or click here to activate the proportional editing and start to add changes. When you are done, go to the shape keys again. By increase or decrease this value, we can start move the eyes. Woo, look at that. Let's add another shape key. Select the face first and click on the plus button. You can also hide the hair from the outliner and rename this key angry face as an example. Tap to edit mode and start to add details. I think you got it guys. When you are done, you can play with this value and here we go. So guys, that was all about this tutorial series. I wanna say thank you guys for supporting me on the channel. Thank you for the positivity. Thank you for the nice comments. Thank you for supporting me on Patreon. And remember, I will catch you soon. Ciao.